Okay. Having talked about protection, we now come on to the actual method of of Ruqya itself. And just for those who maybe don't know fully what Ruqya is, Ruqya is the treatment of sicknesses and afflictions through the recitation of the Qur'an, the names of Allah and the authentic Dua and Adhkar which are reported from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Ruqya can be used for any kind of sickness and affliction. Anything for which you wish a cure. Whether it is psychological, whether it's mental, whether it is physical, whether it is medical, whether it is jinn or sihr or ayn, the evil eye or magic, whatever it is, Whatever has happened, al-hasad, jealousy, whatever has afflicted you, ruqya can be a cure. Bi-idhnillahi tabaraka wa ta'ala. If you seek the right method, then it can be a cure. And before we get into actually how to do it, there is an important point we should note. Today was titled about simple self-ruqya. And there's a reason why I say self-ruqya. And by self-ruqya, by the way, I have a wider definition than some people. I mean ruqya on yourself or ruqya within your family and friends. Like where you're not involving a raqi. Everything that doesn't involve an an official ruqya practitioner, I term to be self-ruqya. Even if maybe some people think self-ruqya is just reading on yourself. I mean, maybe, like they say, لا مشاهة في الاستلاح, There is no harm in terminology. But for me, I, when I say self-ruqya, I mean ruqya that does not involve a professional qari or reciter or raqi or whatever it is. You don't go to anyone or bring anyone to the house. Ruqya, you do it on yourself. Or if you can't do it on yourself, a family member does it on you. You know, husband for wife, wife for husband, you know, father for son, son for father, that kind of thing. Or, you know, at the most distant case, one of your friends who maybe is a little bit more experienced than you or has a little bit of knowledge, inshallah, they go and do it. Why do I spend all my time saying self-rukia, self-rukia, self-rukia? Any of you who have an affliction will realize that treatment is usually significantly long. Proper treatment is usually a long time. Not always. Some people get cured in an hour, some people in a day. But a lot of people go on for a number of months and some of them for years of needing regular treatment. You won't find a raqi and Allah knows best anywhere in the world. Illa man rahim Allah except the one Allah makes it easy and has mercy upon you. You will not find anyone who has that much time for you. They'll give you 10 minutes every month. Or they'll give you, you know, like Rukia Jama'iyya, where they just put you in a room with like 50 other people and read on you at the same time. They won't give you the attention you need. They won't give it to you, the attention you need. Because at the end of the day, nobody has that much time to give to that many people. Right now, I think I have at least 150 requests in my inbox that I haven't even been able to look at yet. And I don't even do Ruqya. I'm not even like dedicated to Ruqya. I I work with new Muslims and non-Muslims. And that's my main goal here. And probably if I open the doors tonight, we could add another 150 on there as well. You know, like easily. You know, like then then it just spirals. And then one person, you help them and then they tell 10 other people and then they come. It's just not sustainable. It's not doable. You can't do it. Now, I'm not saying you should never, ever, ever go to a a Raqi. Sometimes there's a place for it. But where do I want you to start? I want you to start with ruqya on yourself and ruqya within your family. This is the sunnah, by the way, generally. There's nothing wrong with going to someone for ruqya. That's also from the sunnah. But the better and the, 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 the way that is, is better for your iman and better for your nearness to Allah and better for your cure is self-ruqya. And generally, I've done some statistical you know, analysis from all the patients I've dealt with and and other people's patients as well. 
And I can really say with a lot of confidence that those who get the quicker cure are those who are doing self-treatment. They may be supplementing that self-treatment with some help from time to time, but generally they are the people who are doing self-treatment. And if you ask me, who am I most willing to help? I, the ones I love helping are the ones who come to me and say, I watched your video, I did the instructions, I'm doing this, 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 and this. I found one small problem. In your video, you said this, but it's not working, this particular issue. Could you just answer that for me? Those people, I will go, I'll stay up late to answer them. I'll get up early to answer them. Because I can see that they really are doing everything they can. And, you know, maybe it's my fault that I missed out something in one of the videos or I didn't explain it clearly. And so I appreciate those kind of questions. But what I don't appreciate are those people who will say, for example, I've got a big problem, I'm desperate, help me. So, okay, have you tried to use the resources? I can't do it, help me. That's not going to get you anywhere. That's just going to get you put to the back of the queue. And when Allah makes it easy, I'm not, I never say no, you know, to anybody. But, you know, like it's not going to get you to the front of the queue. What is, is doing the best you can. Someone says, I've been treating myself for three months. I've observed this and this. Do you have any suggestions? And generally, and I, that is, that's what we want people to be doing with, with relation to the professional ruqah, the people who do ruqya professionally. Because their best use is to use them like a consultant. And where you go to them to ask them for the things that you couldn't get out of the basic, regular, you know, treatment. That being said, we now come on to the treatment itself. And this is true for 95% of cases. 95% of cases. Now, as well, some people will say, but what about intention? Isn't it necessary for me to know what's wrong with me before I start Rukhya? And some of my, my colleagues in Rukhya have said this. Hafidahumullah, uh, may Allah protect and preserve them. However, I've done some research on this issue and I feel confident in saying that at least in the early days, you can do a general intention for a cure and inshallah ta'ala that will benefit you. And when you know what it is, then you can become more specific inshallah. And the evidence for this is that the dua that the Prophet ﷺ used for ruqya was general. For example, Allahumma Rabban nas adhi bil bas Washfi anta shafi la shifa'a illa shifa'uk shifa'an la yughadiru saqama This dua is general. Make the problem go away, O Lord of mankind. Cure and you are the curer. A cure that leaves no sickness. The Prophet ﷺ did not say, Adhi bil sihr rabban nas. Make the sihr go away, Lord of mankind. Adhi bil jinn rabban nas. Make the jinn go away, Lord of mankind. Adhi bil marad an nafsi rabban nas. No, he said, Adhi bil ba's. Whatever is wrong with them, make it go away. And in some du'as, the Prophet ﷺ combined between multiple things. Bismillahi arqiq, min kulli shay'in yu'dhik, aw kulli aynin hasid, Allahu yashfiq. In the name of Allah, I perform ruqya for everything that is harming you. Sickness, illness, mental, psychological, jinn, sihr, whatever it is, from anything that is harming you. And so all of these different du'as, this du'a, in the name of Allah, I make ruqya for you for everything that is harming you, for every, evi for every envious eye. For every magic, for every envious eye. There's a lot of versions of this dua that combine many things in one dua. And since they combine many things in one dua, that it gives us the permissibility of doing a general ruqya with a general intention of a cure. At least until we know what is specifically wrong. And I do very much respect those brothers, Jazamallah khairan wa hafidhahumullah, who speak about specific intention for ruqya. I respect that opinion. But in my experience and based on that evidence, I do not consider that opinion to be the most correct. I consider the most correct opinion to be that you can do a general ruqya with a general intention 
until Allah Azza wa Jal opens up your heart to that which has afflicted you. And really doing the treatment is more important than knowing what's wrong. Some people spend their whole time, how will I know if it's sihr? How will I know if it's jinn? How will I know if I have a jinn inside of me? Do the treatment. Tawakkal ala Allah. Put your trust in Allah Azza wa Jal. 